All right, hello once again. This is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and I've been creating a series of video presentations. First, I did about nine of them on um, HTML, which allows us to put content into a website. Then I did about four more for CSS, which allows us to style the content of a website. And before I go on with the CSS, which is what I'm going to do, I do want to mention that I plan on providing for everyone um, a bunch of materials, especially those of you taking the summer camp. And some of the stuff I'm going to have in there is going to include this. I found three different cheat sheets, a beginner's HTML cheat sheet. And this is from Web Setup. And as you can see, it's got, it's about 18 pages, I guess. And I'm not going to go over any of it, but I just wanted you to see this. And as we quickly, again, I'm not going over it, but as you walk through it, there is stuff that is just not enough time in three hours to sit and cover with you. But if you want a lot more depth and breadth of coverage than you're getting in the three hours or so of, of the videos that I'm giving you, all right, this is a great place to start. I guess it's 13 pages. There is another one for CSS, and this is a lot longer. It's 34 pages. But again, notice some of the stuff we've talked you know, about in here. We've talked backgrounds and borders and box model and fonts and text. We're going to get into columns, but colors. We've talked a little bit about tables. All right. There's a lot of stuff there's just not enough time to go over. Things like animations and transitions. But there's some really good stuff that's in here if you're interested. And then uh, the stuff I'm going to go through tomorrow will be on JavaScript and we'll learn a little programming. You notice again, that's 29 pages. I'm not going to have time to go over everything that's in here. But I will cover the JavaScript basics, variables, arrays, operators, functions, loops, if else, strings, numbers and math, a little bit on dates. But I'm not going to have enough time to do things like events, working with a browser, DOM, etc. There's just not enough time. But we do that in the AWD 1100 class that's here. All right, the other couple things I wanted, and again, I'm trying to keep this short and sweet, that I wanted to say to you is, first of all, occasionally people will ask me, you know, when you're looking for information, where do you go? All right. And one of the places that I like to push people towards, because the guy, not only is he a super good guy with a really good story, but he's just so smart. And it's a gentleman named Brad Traversy. I'm actually a, a patron of his. You know, I pay, it's like $10 a month, and I get his, you know, some of his stuff that he doesn't put out there for free. But if you go out to Traversy Media, notice he's got 1.55, that's million subscribers and 879 videos. And he this is him right here. And he you know I I I don't want to you know take away from his thunder or anything else, but he had all sorts of problems in his earlier life that he's overcome and he's unbelievably almost wildly successful. All right? I have talked with him electronically about different things and he's just a good person. But if you notice he's got HTML crash course. Now it's three years old, so it's a little dated, but the stuff is still good. And it's an hour long, hour and almost an hour and a half CSS crash course, hour and 40 minutes JavaScript crash course. What a terrific place to start. All right. Another guy that I've, I've taken classes from and he just gets it is Colt Steele. All right. And if you start looking in here, if I go to Colt Steele and if I go over to his channel here and I go over to his videos, you're again going to find, uh, let's see, here's stuff on Git. And I pointed that to that before. Two-hour beginner's guide to JavaScript. All right. Um, and, and there's other stuff. I, I'm, you know, he's got stuff in here for CSS. He's got stuff in here for HTML, et cetera. All right. And he's got 172,000 subscribers. The other thing that I wanted to mention in here quickly is that I occasionally take classes through a, uh, an online thing that's called Udemy. All right, some call it Udemy, but I think it's Udemy. All right, .com. 
And then when you look in here, and you might say, well, that's kind of expensive. You know, here's some classes, advanced CSS, Flexbox, et cetera. And yeah, and they've got courses that run into hundreds of dollars, but typically what they do at least once or twice a month is they take the majority of their courses and they make them like $10.99 or $11.99, all right? So I've taken literally hundreds of courses through them. And the last thing I want to say, and I'm not going to talk about it right now, but we are going to talk about it when we actually go in and start to build the site. And that is we're going to go out to fonts.google.com. And you'll notice there's 1,052 different fonts that are in there that we don't have available to us naturally. But let's just say, and maybe I will go through this and try to do it quickly and hopefully not screw it up. The Source Code Pro. So let's say I want that. Okay, so I go to Source Code Pro and let's see. And I click Download Family. All right, there it is. Okay, and when I look at it in here, this is all of the different stuff that's ava available rather with Source Code Pro. If I didn't want all that, I could just choose what I wanted. So let's say for the styles here, rather than downloading everything, I wanted this, and I wanted this, and I wanted this. I'm just going to leave it right there. So I can come in here then, and I can grab this, copy it to my clipboard, go into my file here, and it doesn't matter if I put it above or below my style sheet, so I'll just put it right here. But this is telling me that I want to go into Google Fonts, and I want to download that family, Source Code Pro, and there's different parts of it that I'm downloading, etc. All right. So why did I even tell you that? Well, now if I come back in here and for the body, if I say font family, and I'm going to change this to source code pro. All right. And now I'm going to go look at my, where is it? Okay. Now, you might think that nothing changed, and I think it's changed, but I'm not positive. Looking at this, it may or may not have. I could have screwed it up. But the point is, that's how easy it is to go out and basically land and put in other fonts. So I don't know if Source Code Pro, if I put it in, in the right way there or not. So let's jump back to here and to here, to here. It looks like I did it correctly, but we'll do it like that. So this font family, I'm going to go grab that tag, and I'm going to jump in here, and I'm going to put it in there. Source Code Pro and Monospace. Now, there might be other fonts in here which would be overwriting it. I don't think there are, but I'm going to save that. I'm going to jump over to here and go into here. All right. Now, you may be able to tell looking at it, I've got a totally different font in here. Some of these fonts that you're going to use in here, you might find and really like. Other ones you might look at and be like, why would I even care about this? But I will tell you one that's used a lot. And I see it in a lot of demos, etc. So you can come in here too, and I believe you can search for a font. So let's bring that back up again. Fonts.google.com search. I'm going to put in here Roboto because it's one that people tend to use a lot. It's this one right here. So again, if I click here, and I'm just going to add a couple of these. I'll add, in fact, I'll add this one, and I'll add a dark, a real dark one right here. And that's it. So I'm going to put in that link. You can add as many of these fonts as you want. One thing, you typically don't want more than two or three fonts, period, though. So let me go back into this. Let me remove the tag that I just put in, and I'll replace it with that one. All right, so I now have that, and then come back in here, so let's do a file save, 
All right, and then we'll come back into here and I'm going to grab that tag. And again, I will go into my CSS and change that font family. So now I'm using Roboto. And if for some reason it wouldn't work, it'll fall back to sans serif. And if I go back in here again, there you go. So you can make drastic different looks in here by just using literally some of this stuff in here. All right. And this, these are fonts. Why would you want to do that? Because let's face it, when you come in here and you do this, when you come in and you key in here, so if I came in here and said, I'm going to, re, I'm going to remove this for just a second. So if I come in and just say font family, this is limited. This is not, you know, every font there is in the world. And you typically don't want your site to look like everybody else's site. So by going out to Google Fonts, that's one way that you can improve upon that. We'll just leave it right there. All right. One thing we've talked about in here that I want to dwell on for the rest of this lecture, and that is we've talked about this. Pixels, rems, etc. What the heck is that stuff? All right. So I'm going to, again, go out to the Internet. And, again, I want to go to W3 Schools, but I'll let the system find it for me. And that is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to type W3 Schools. Um, font units. All right. And it says CSS units. And I would like to show you these. All right. So when you look right here at these fonts that they're showing right here, the only one that's in here that I have used has been pixels, PX. But you can also use CM for centimeters, MM for millimeters, IN for inches, etc. Now feel free to, to, to use any of these triads that you want. I'm not going to go through one of them. Probably the only one on here that I use is this one. Now, notice these are absolute lengths. That means they're fixed in size. And they will all basically appear as that size. I would recommend that you rarely, other than the pixels on certain occasions, that you rarely, if ever, use any of these absolute sizes especially if you are working on a site and that site is going to involve looking at the site on different types of devices so in other words i'm going to this, these are my words you're not going to find this any place but these absolute units rather don't play well with mobile devices typically what you'd rather use are relative likes and again i will show you quickly the ones that i use the most often and those are m's and rims all right Rem, it says, is relative to the font size of the root element, which is, means HTML at the top of the page. So, if you remember earlier, we went in and, let's see. We went in and for a couple of the things that we were working on, all right, I put in here 2rem for the logo, all right? What's a rem? A rem is 16 pixels. So if I change that to 32 px, okay, and I go back and we look at our site, it's not going to look any different than it did before. So kind of keep that in mind as far as what it looks like. Okay, so there it is. And if I go back in again and I change it, whoops, I don't want that, sorry. 
and I go back in again and I change that back again so that instead of saying 32 pixels, it says 2 rem, all right? Now it's going to do that based on whatever the default font size is for the device I'm using it for. So what's the difference between 2 rem and 2 m? With 2 rem, which what we're looking at right now, it bases it off the font size that's in here. Now, let's let's suppose that I went in here and I set the font size just for this, for this header. All right. For the the let, let's say for the header, let's say I set the font size to I don't know. Um, let's just say I do use pixels and I set it to 64 pixels. All right. And 64 pixels is the same thing as saying 4 rem. So let's say I set it to 64 pixels. Then I came in here and I set it, the font size in there, to 2M, not rem, but M. What the difference is between M's and rem's is rem's bases it off of whatever the font size is at the root element up here. M's do it based off of the font size of the last thing that's set or of the parent container. So if I set the font size here, and I use M's in here, it'll be based off of that size and not off of this size. Now, if I confused you, sorry. So what do you do? You look in here and you see what they have to say because they've got examples. Now, I've used M's. I've never used EX. I've never used CH. I've used REMs. View width and view height are a little bit different. With that, imagine that they cut your screen into 100 pieces. And it allows you to play with stuff that way. And same with Vmin and Vmax. But the other one I've used quite a bit has been percentage. And I want to show you quickly how we'd use that. So I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to go into, this is where I am today. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, this is where I'll be. Let's copy this. And I'm in day two. There's the stuff I'm working on. I'm going to paste in images. And I'm going to paste in, I, and I got this St. Louis arch. And you remember by default how big it is. All right. And when we put, I'm going to put it on a web page. And then I'm going to show you a little bit of how we can change that. So it's called St. Louis arch.jpg. So let me come in. To our page and let's say right at the top even before this three headers thing that we've got in there all right i'm going to come in and i'm going to put in my image tag all right and i'm going to say source equals images slash and i'm going to use the st louis arch and alt will be equal to picture of the st louis arch okay all right now i put that in and what's going to change? As always, easiest to show you. So let's come in here and let's look. Well, remember this? Remember how big that was? Because by default, it's 3,000 pixels by something or other. So how do I start fixing that? Well, one thing that I can do in here is I can come into my CSS and I can say, you know what? Anytime I've got an image... Let's have the maximum width of the image be 100%. All right. And now I'm going to save and looky, looky. It's now taking up 100% of my screen size. Now, what if that's too much? All right. Well, what if I come in here and say 100%? What if I say 90%? Now notice how it pushed it over. It's still right there, but it pushed it over 10% here. So you might think, well, how could I center this? The way that you typically center things is you go like this. And I want to show you this. It's kind of an important concept. You typically would center things by saying margin, oops, margin, auto. And that would typically center it on the page. Let's see if that worked. 
it didn't. And the reason it didn't work is this particular, you know, images are looked at as they are not inline elements that take up the whole screen. They are referred to as block level elements. All right, so what if I come in here and I do this up above here? If I say display inline block like that. All right, and it doesn't look like it changed it at all. Oh, is it is it display block? Now it's centered on the page. See that? So I've told the system that even though this is an inline element, I want you to treat it as though it's a block level element. And if you say, I don't get it, guess what? Yes, you do. Because we've already looked at this right here. Remember this? All right. So when I go back here, and I've got in here, this was, all right, I'm going to give this an ID, and I'm going to say equals main menu, okay? All right. And then I'm going to tell the system that what I want to do is I want it to come up here. I'm going to get up near the top here. And I want to say for my main menu, and my LIs, I want to display them in line. And notice what happened. Inline says display them on one line. When we say block, we said to treat it like a block level element. Well, by default, these are block level elements, which means they go one and they stack on top of one another. So if I go back and set reset this back to the default, which is block, oops, and I look at it, see how it's changed? So there is, let's look at CSS display property. All right, and I love to go to W3 schools because they always have examples. There is none, there is inline, there is block and there's inline block. None means basically hide it. Don't display it. All right. So let's see. There's other things that are in here too. I was hoping there'd be a description of each one of these. Well, let's look. Let's look at these that are in here. All right. So this first example has got display none. There's nothing special for it. All right, it's just, just display it. All right, then we've got inline. Does it look any different? Not really. Then we've got block. Does it look any different? Notice with block, it took that and it put it on its own line. And then we've got inline block. All right, let's see. I, I don't like their description here. So CSS display property. Do they have anything good on CSS tricks here? Well, maybe this will be better. Okay, there we go. The display property is the most important CSS property for controlling layout. Block level elements, as we mentioned before, start on a new line and take up the whole width available. Those were our block line elements. Inline only take up the amount of space in there that they need. None means hide it, all right? And you can override by taking something that is inline and making it block or inline block, which kind of combines the two, all right? And they've got some good examples in here. I'm just going to hold it right there because I'm already running over here.